question is a really fun one, but it's having uh, like interpersonal conversations. So this is a good way if you ever want to have like an emotional conversation with someone or you ever want to have, you know, like a, a deeper conversation with someone and you find it hard to sort of speak or to get your words out or to put thoughts together. Okay, when we have the full brain activation we're able to overcome those fears because those fears are now conscious, not unconscious. Do you sort of get it? So it's very important because when my full brain is activated, it's working simultaneously. Do you sort of get it? Like it's not working beside each other or against each other or anything like that. So when I'm sitting here normally and I'm in my conscious hemisphere only well my subconscious hemisphere is acting on autopilot it's auto running when i have full brain activation while it's still running on autopilot it's sort of become a, a, a part of my awareness so i'm more aware of my emotions i'm more aware of my physical sensation i'm more aware of my you know um like my 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 biochemical states like you know, the emotional states within me of how I'm feeling. And it's very important for this because fears are based in feelings. Feeling uneasy, you know, feeling nervous. Do you sort of get it? So when I'm feeling nervous, uneasy or scared, well, within the full brain activation process, I'm able to now face what is causing this with a level of understanding or a level of awareness conscious awareness because it is a part of my conscious awareness now do you sort of understand so it's very important that we we get these practices or that we do these practices because regardless of what we think may happen okay like you will get the result if you do the work like if you if your full brain is activated like you whatever you say on repeat will be ingrained within your subconscious mind and the importance for this is now we're able to condition in new emotions new narratives new beliefs so an important aspect of this process is to understand what i mean by condition okay condition isn't saying once a day you're an amazing person Conditioning is saying for an hour straight, you're an amazing person, 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 you're an amazing person. Do you sort of get it? It's just repeat. And what we're doing, okay, is we're repeating it so much until that pathway becomes stronger, okay? So that synaptic pathway becomes stronger than the previous negative synaptic pathway. So if you're a highly negative person, we are conditioning for hours. If you are not a highly negative person, it may only take a couple of minutes. It may only take one go to do it. Do you sort of get it? Like we do it until the change happens. Now the key thing with this practice, okay, is what we are doing is we are reconditioning until we feel emotional shifts. Now, how do you feel an emotional shift? An emotional shift is a biochemical shift, a state change within your body. Do you sort of get it? So we're saying, you're an amazing person. 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 You know, or I'm an amazing person. You know, I'm this, I'm that, like whatever you want to put in there. And we're just sitting there and we're just repeating it and we're repeating it and we're repeating it. And the subconscious mind will try and take us on that, you know, that alternate synaptic pathway. But every time it tries to take us there, we're just re ingraining this is the pathway we're going. Do you sort of see? So we're force rebooting our brain from having a synaptic pathway that is predominantly in a negative narrative or negative belief and we're forcing it over to a positive and then we're enforcing that positive until that positive narrative or belief is the only thing left and then we don't have to worry about that negative belief coming back because that positive belief is so ingrained 
So it's important to understand this, that it's not a one time, one day practice. We don't half ass it. We put in the effort until it is achieved within us. And then after we've achieved it, we put in more effort to lock it in. Do you sort of get it? So if you understand this practice and you're able to do this practice, just by, just by having the full brain activation, okay, every day and just sitting down for an hour, relaxing, thinking about your day, whatever, thinking about how you feel, whatever, re-ingraining or reprogramming new beliefs within your mind, like you will create a mind that is so structured so strong within its foundation that nothing can affect you. Sort of like what I've done. Do you get it? Like these practices I developed for myself, for me, because I wanted to overcome these fucking problems. Do you sort of get it? Like there's no, this may work. If you do the practice, it will work. If you believe it work, will work, it will work. If you put in the effort to achieve the result, it will work. If you half ass it, you will talk shit. You will fail. You will fall short. Do you sort of get it? Whatever you put into this is what you're going to get back out of it. So if you put everything into this, you will get everything back out of it. If you put nothing into this, you will get nothing back out of it. And the key thing to remember and realize is this is your life. Do you sort of get it? Like, it's not me that's going to suffer if you don't do this. It's only ever you. Do you sort of get it? If you don't deal with and, and face your, your problems and structure your mind and take control of your mind, your mind will always control you. And the way your mind controls you is through others. Do you sort of get it? Naturally, the way we validate ourselves is through others until we learn how to validate ourselves through ourselves. Naturally, you know, the ways in which we structure our basis of reality and our conceptualization of reality are from others until we learn how to do it ourselves. Do you sort of get it? This is the practice that allows you to do it for yourself. Do you sort of get it? So it's if you put the work in to become your best in every moment, in every day, you will become your best. If you talk shit, you will forever talk shit. Do you sort of get it? So an important thing to understand about this practice is this practice is based in Psych-K, psychology kinestology, okay? So an important aspect of psychology kinestology is the understanding of the positioning and alignment of the body, okay, to the functionality and activation of the brain. So it's very important if you want to understand these, the fundamental frameworks of this process, you would want to understand Psych K. Bruce Lipton is the best person to sort of learn about. Um, him and a uh, psychologist got together and created it. And it's very, very important um, information that he has on it because the approach he's taken is at a cellular level. So understanding cellular influence and behaviors and then being able to decipher and discern it into the psychology because our psychology is based in our biochemicals. Do you know what I mean? So in our chemistry is our thought. Our thoughts aren't electricity as we think of electricity, like it's coming from the sun. Our thoughts are biochemical. So chemical states within our brain cause thoughts. Do you sort of get it? So when we understand the biochemicals within our body, we are able to understand how they influence our thoughts. So it's very important if you ever want to look into it, Bruce Lipton is a great person to listen to because he knows a lot of stuff on this. And he is the creator of it. Alrighty, so an important aspect to think about in terms of full brain activation when we're doing these practices is what are you trying to achieve in your life? You know what I mean? Like, what trauma are you trying to get rid of? You know, what, what 
what aspect of your mindset are you trying to build? Like, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Because the more focused you are on what you want or what you don't want, the easier it is to stay directed towards your goal. If you say, I want to feel better, what is feeling better? Do you sort of get it? Like, it's great. You want to feel better. Good for you. Like, what is feel better? Do you want to feel healthier? Do you want to feel more energy? Do you want to feel happier? Do you want to feel less sad? Like, what is it? So you have to know exactly what it is. So we use the full brain activation with the retrospection to look through all those negative events and situations in our life or positive and really dive into understanding what what did we not like in the situation? What did we like in the situation? What do we want moving forward? Do you sort of understand? Because when we understand this, okay, now we have clear direction of, you know, I want to feel more happy within myself. That's easy to achieve. Okay, how do we, like, like, what is happiness within ourselves? Do you know what I mean? Well, happiness is a feeling. Happiness is a biochemical state. Do you sort of get it? So if I want to feel more happy within myself, well, an important thing to do is to understand that the language I use and the thoughts that I hold and the areas of focus I hold are vital to that happiness. So if I'm thinking negative thoughts and I'm thinking negative about myself and I'm unhappy with myself and all of this, well, I'm not going to be happy within myself. Okay? You know what I mean? Like, if, if my emotional states and things like that aren't being controlled in terms of like my emotions are all over the shop and it's very very volatile and it's disorganized and chaotic within my mind well it's going to be very hard for me to feel happy because I might be, be happy in one environment and then all of a sudden in the exact same environment I'm now unhappy like what's causing the volatility so we got to understand that you know by us being able to you know, find those emotions, to name those emotions, to understand those emotions, to categorize those emotions of, for example, I feel anger when people mistreat me. So it's sort of like, I don't have to feel anger unless people are mistreating me. Do you know what I mean? So I'm able to categorize that to, this is when I am, I am accepting that I am okay to feel anger. And I've got it there and it's clearly defined what causes anger, what causes me to feel anger. Do you know what I mean? So that in any situation where people aren't mistreating me, well, whatever they do, I'm not going to feel anger. Do you sort of understand? So when we really get clear on understanding the, the range of emotions that we feel and why we're feeling them and what triggers them, we're able to put them in specific boxes that have specific trigger points, okay? And we're able to, when anger shows up because someone said something stupid to me, well, then I'm able to ignore that anger. Do you know what I mean? Because I've categorized this is when I am justified to to show anger and to feel anger do you know what i mean just like fear we can we can put our fear into a box and say if i'm in a life-threatening danger so like if i'm out in the woods and i stumble across a, a mama bear and a couple of cubs okay fear's acceptable if i'm gonna ask out someone that i like fear's not acceptable do you sort of get it Like, yeah, I can be scared, but it's not real. So we're putting it into a box and then we're creating specific triggers where it's acceptable for me to give in to that emotion. Do you know what I mean? And then we do it with all emotions. And the ones that we want to feel predominantly, we make those triggers very, very easy. So for example, if I want to be happy within myself, well, one of my triggers for happiness is, is trees. If I see trees, I'm instantly happy. Because once I see trees, I'm allowed to be happy. Do you sort of get it? Like if I hear birds, I'm happy. 
because it's a trigger point. Because the thing is, is there's always going to be trees in life. There's always going to be birds in life. All I have to do is walk outside and I've got a trigger to be happy. Do you sort of understand? And in a life where you say, oh, there may not be trees, I can promise you this. In a world without trees, it becomes hard to breathe. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. It, it doesn't matter if there's a circumstance where there's no trees or birds. Like, that's cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm probably not going to be too concerned with that because I'm going to be more concerned with breathing. Do you get what I mean? And you could argue, oh, if you go to space. If I go to fucking space, my primary concern will be the oxygen. Do you sort of get it? Without the oxygen, there ain't nothing else. I don't give a fuck about anything else. If there's oxygen, I'm happy. Do you sort of get it? Like, we just change our trigger for happiness to whatever is the base elements. So there's always going to be trees. There's always going to be birds. So I can always be happy. Do you know what I mean? Or I could say that, you know, my trigger for happiness is when people are polite to me or when I get to be nice to people or when blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Like my trigger can be anything. So it's important that when we categorize these boxes, okay, when it doesn't involve the trigger, I am unable to feel that. So, for example, if my trigger for love is someone who values me, being valued and respected, okay? So, my love is in a box, and if you do not value and respect me, no matter how much you try to make me feel any way, I am going to reject it because outside of these triggers, like, it's not coming out. Do you sort of get it? Like these boxes that we are creating for our emotions protect us but they also protect other people do you sort of get it when my anger is only allowed to be used in specific situations it protects everyone else in any other situation but it also protects me from doing stupid things from being misled being manipulated being you know blah 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 provoked into fights so the important thing you've got to understand is when we set up the box and we set up the triggers, anything that is less than those triggers, fuck it off. Don't care. If, if someone is not valuing and respecting you, but they're trying to, for example, you know, get you hooked on them, play manipulation games, play, you know, psychological manipulation of, ooh, I'm not interested, blah, blah, blah. Like, Every time I get the natural response to give in to that, okay, for me, and, and, and I want, like I'm being manipulated in terms of, you know, emotions are being manipulated, okay, like every time that happens, we look at it. Are we being valued? Are we being respect? No? Okay, emotions go back in the box. Do you sort of get it? Like, we're not, we're not just letting anyone just come up and take our emotions for a run. Like, this is what it means to be a composed person. Is that, is that, like, you can't just run off with me, love, because if you don't meet me standard for what I'm looking for, like, the love goes back in the box. Like, I don't really care what I may think or feel. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's in the box for a reason. Because this is what I have deemed is when it is acceptable for me to show it. Outside of that, it is unacceptable. Do you know what I mean? So it's very important because this is the way that we can categorize it so that when I'm feeling, like when I want to feel happy, I'm not getting fear. I'm not getting anger. I'm not getting mis like any of these other emotions. Do you sort of get it? When I want to feel love, I can just feel love because the anger is in a box. It's there for a reason. It's there for specific situations. It's not all just fucking in a bucket jumbled up. And when I go to, you know, feel love, I'm just throwing the bucket of all my bullshit at, at someone's face. Like, do you sort of get it? Like we have it compartmentalized because then I'm allowed or able to individually say, I want to feel love in this situation. Or maybe I want to feel love and happiness. Do you sort of get it? 
So I'm able to choose the emotions I wanna feel in the situation, and then they're the emotions I feel. And the other emotions are in their boxes waiting to be triggered. Do you sort of get it? So it's very important because this is the way that we become an emotionally stable and grounded person where we're not all volatile. Do you sort of get